Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our midweek devotions. I want us to start by asking this question. What is one thing in your possession that has the greatest value? At least in your own personal assessment. What is one thing in your possession that has the greatest value? You think has the greatest value? Could it be your money? Could it be your luxury car? Or what about your house? Your house is fully decorated, it's fully furnished. It has, you, find it as, as, you find it as the one that has the greatest value. Or could it be your insurances, your investments? Or what about your family and children? That could be it. Or what about the property that you bought up in highlands or in the coastal area? Or what about your health? Or even your life. Tonight, as we recall the last week of earthly life of Jesus Christ, let us look at Matthew chapter 26, verses 6 to 13. If you have your Bibles with you, uh, please open to Matthew chapter 26, verses 6 to 13. It reads here Now, when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she, for she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Tonight, I want us to focus on verse 13. It says, Truly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Now, how will this be? How will the memory of this woman be mentioned whenever the gospel is preached. Now, when Jesus said this, it doesn't mean that he is asking the disciples to go and preach the gospel and every portion of the preaching of the gospel, they would say about this woman, a woman who poured an expensive perfume on Jesus' head and, and, and narrate this incident. I don't think that was Jesus Christ was expecting for them to do. And so why? How will this happen? How will the memory of this woman be uh, proclaimed every time the gospel is preached? Now, this is because of the resemblance of this act of woman here and the death and, uh, res death and crucifixion of, of Jesus Christ. What the woman did here, here, her action was in a way a parable, a drama that portrayed spiritual truth about Jesus Christ. And so tonight, we will look at three resemblances where this uh, act that the woman did is very similar to what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. Number one. The woman was motivated to do this out of her emotions, out of her deep love for Jesus Christ. Nobody told her to do it. Nobody commanded her to do it. It was just something that she took upon herself and she did it out of her love for Jesus Christ. In the same way, Jesus also made his sacrifice out of love. He had no obligation to die for us, but he chose to do it. He did it willingly, motivated by his love, primarily his love for his Father and his love for us. The Bible says, that God demonstrates His own love for us in this while we were still sinners. At this time, the disciples didn't understand that Jesus was going to die and probably the woman as well. This woman, if, he would, if she would have known that Jesus was going to die a few days later on, she might have saved this perfume and used it in the actual burial of Jesus Christ. But she didn't know about that. She seems to have just poured the perfume on Jesus simply because she had this incredible intense devotion for Jesus Christ. Today, many people are concerned with right beliefs. That's good. We need right beliefs. Many people are concerned with right behaviors. That's also good. We need to have right behaviors. But here in this story, this woman was demonstrating to us something different, something that we need as well. And she was showing us the right emotion and right feelings. The heart that we need for God is an intensely personal devotion, a powerful dedication of ourselves to God to his service. 
How about us? How often do we show such intense personal emotion to Jesus Christ? Here, what the woman did here was an unusual thing. And so she was criticized. She was criticized by the disciples. The society was criticizing her. And at times, we, when we make decisions, we, we do things, we allow the society to influence us, to dictate the things that we do. How often do we find ourselves fallen, falling into that scenario? The woman here, her act was born out of her love for Jesus Christ. And so let us also do things for God, do things for His people because of our, our, because out of our love for Jesus Christ. The second resemblance that we could find between the act of the woman here and Jesus' death on the cross was the enormous sacrifice that they both have. Uh, this was some incredibly expensive perfume. The woman here, the Bible says that this could, is very expensive. It could amount to a very large sum. You know, some scholars are saying that this could be worth of a year's wage of an average worker at that time. And today, if you're an average uh, daily income earner of around 360 pesos that would be around 130,000 pesos for for a year and just imagine that amount of perfume you would have a few years ago someone gave me a perfume this bottle it cost around 5,000 pesos and so imagine a perfume that's amounting to 130,000 pesos how many would that be how many bottles would that be and just imagine, just a matter of seconds, it maybe minutes, you pour out that perfume on someone's head and just all of this value, all of this money, all of these resources will just vanish, will just evaporate, and go away. Hundred thousands of pesos just evaporate away. Imagine that. This just shows us something of the intensity of this woman's love for Jesus Christ. She must have known what she was doing. She must have known how much it would have cost her, but she did not care. Her love for Jesus Christ was so great that she was not concerned about the cost. She was even probably happy about it because she was getting a chance to demonstrate her love for Jesus Christ. From an observer's perspective, what she did was a sacrifice. But from her perspective, she was very willing. This was a small price to pray for her. She, this was just a token of her love for Jesus Christ. In Jesus' perspective, this was not a sacrifice. This is a beautiful thing. It is something like a, a beautiful art, a beautiful music, a piece of music for Jesus Christ. And so as a resemblance to what Jesus Christ did, from all perspectives, the death, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, it was a tremendous sacrifice. It was an enormous sacrifice, but Jesus Christ was willing to make it. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, he scorned its shame, and he went through and obeyed God the Father to go through the cross and die. Because Jesus Christ knew the glory that was waiting for him. And he knew that the glory was not just for him, it was also for those who would believe in him, who would trust him as a personal Lord and Savior. And Jesus Christ was very willing to pay for that enormous sacrifice. As we grasp the enormity of this sacrifice, we cannot help but respond in love and devotion as well. And there is no sacrifice too great. Nothing we do could ever compare to what Jesus Christ has done for us. Our love for Him should cost us to live for Him, to give Him all that we are. The third resemblance of, the, of this act of the woman and what Jesus Christ did on the cross was that it is an extravagant sacrifice. It was far more than what was necessary. It was outrageous. The woman was not a calculating person. She did not count what would be the minimum amount, minimum volume of perfume that I would pour on Jesus Christ so that it would be enough as an anointment for her, as an anointing for Him. What is the minimum thing that I can do for Jesus Christ? What is my minimum duty? No, the woman was not computing. She was not calculating like that. She, nor she was tied down to tradition. She did not even think how other women would show respect to a rabbi. She was not afraid of public opinion. Her love for Jesus Christ freed her from that fear. She was not afraid to do something out of the ordinary. She did not ask the disciples if it was okay. She just broke traditions and go on ahead and pour that perfume on Jesus Christ. She did what she could because only 
that she could express her devotion to Jesus Christ. Her love for Jesus Christ was so great that it called for an exceptional act of creative devotion. When we look at this story, the disciples didn't actually object to the anointing. They did not object to the perfume, but they objected to the extravagance. Maybe if it was just a small pour, a pinch, maybe the disciples did not object. But because it was poured, everything was poured on Jesus Christ, they objected. This was too much of a good thing for them. This was ridiculously wasteful for the disciples. But not so with Jesus Christ. What she has done is a beautiful thing. It had an aesthetic value. It was a beautiful thing in the eyes of Jesus Christ. And when such beauty is displayed, it defies any cost analysis. It is impossible to put a price on something that is very, very beautiful. Sometimes we are too concerned about the usefulness of some things. We often think that way. That means we only do things that are ordinary. Never the unusual, never the beautiful, never anything heroic, and never anything that requires faith. But sometimes it is good to be reminded that usefulness is not the most important thing in the universe. It is good to be reminded that usefulness is not our God, that efficiency is not our God, public opinion is not our God. It is good to be reminded that traditional boundaries of politeness are not our God. It is good to be reminded that Jesus is our God and it is useful to use up our material resources to honor and glorify Him. Maybe there aren't any tangible results, but a sacrifice of love and devotion has a usefulness of its own. An act of great beauty has a usefulness of its own, especially when it is done for Jesus Christ. This woman's act of extravagant waste was actually a picture of such spiritual beauty, a heavenly fragrance. It, it, it pictured the sacrifice of Jesus Christ in a way that words could not be could not express. It is an extravagant love of God for the people through His Son Jesus Christ. I'm sure you know Jim Elliot and his friends and their wives. You remember them as they ministered to the Okan tribe in Ecuador. They showed an extravagant love for these people as well. Even with the possibility of being speared to death, they still went ahead and ministered to these tribal people. Even after their death, their wives continued on, continued to minister. And eventually, the gospel was preached. Many of the tribes were, uh, many of the tribes became believers. And that is such an extravagant love for God and for the ministry. And in the person of Jesus Christ, God showed us that extravagant gift. Grace is extravagant. God gave us more than what was necessary. God could have just saved us with a snap of His finger and throw every evil things, every wickedness to hell and judgment be passed upon them and just bring us all to Himself. But God did not do that. He showed His extravagant love by sending His precious Son to us, allowing us to develop an intimate relationship with Him, letting us know Him in a personal way, allowing us to experience all uh, that we can with Jesus Christ. Remember in one of our preaching here in church last a Missions Month where I whipped hard uh, a beautiful flower on stage. It was to signify it was to signify the wrath of God being displayed on Jesus Christ because of all the sins was laid upon him. All the sins of the world was laid upon him. And after the sermon one member approached me and said this member was seated somewhere near the, the, the stage near near the front and when I was, he said, while I was whipping the, the flower, while it was being crushed, while it was being destroyed, he smelled the aroma of the flowers produced when they were bitten, when they were crushed. He smelled that beautiful aroma. And that just tells us that there's a pleasing aroma that would exude upon the suffering, upon the crucifixion and the death of the Lamb of God. Though it may display an idea of anger, pain, and suffering, and a waste of an innocent life, but it will also display the beauty of an extravagant love that God has for His creation. God does things out of the ordinary. And Jesus shows us total commitment, total sacrifice, so that we might respond to Him all that we have. 
brothers and sisters, we need to respond to Jesus Christ the way this woman did. With a supreme focus on Him, a single-minded love that counts everything else as a loss for Jesus Christ. A love that does not ask how little we can do to get by. A love that is not worried about public opinion. A love that is no longer concerned about what is within the boundaries of normal devotion. A love that is willing to be extravagant. When this woman poured perfume on Jesus, she was not only picturing some aspects of what Jesus did on the cross, she also pictured the way that we should respond to Jesus with such complete devotion, such willingness to sacrifice, such willingness to go beyond the boundaries of normal and to have an extraordinary love for Jesus Christ. At the beginning, I ask, we ask ourselves, what is one thing that we own that has greatest value? Are we willing to sacrifice, to offer this for the glory of Jesus Christ in our lives? Are we willing to show our extravagant love to Jesus Christ with our resources, our health, our life? Are we willing to serve Jesus Christ? Are we willing to serve other people as an expression of our extravagant love an enormous sacrifice for Jesus Christ. Have you ever done anything so outrageous for Jesus Christ that other people would have you thought, would have you think that you are foolish? Have you ever been so bold with love that other people have criticized you with what you did? Some of us may have. Maybe it has been a very long time ago that you did it. Whenever it was, it was a sweet smelling aroma offered to God. I'm sure it is an offering that is meaningful to God. We want, when we want to give something to God, when we want to offer something to God, God desires us that it would cost us something. David in 2 Samuel 24, 24 says, No, but I will buy it from you for a price. I will, know, I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God that cost me nothing brothers and sisters may we have the same mindset as that of David and as that of this woman when we offer a sacrifice to God when we give our service to him may it be something that really means something to us in this time of the holy week may we think of ways how we can show our enormous and extravagant love for Jesus Christ may we learn from the example of this woman have a blessed evening and God bless you shall we pray our gracious and loving Father, we thank you for the sacrifice that is extravagant and enormous you did through your Son, Jesus Christ. Today, Father, as we commemorate Holy Week, move us, Father, Lord, to give our share as well, to partake in the sufferings and the sacrifice that your Son, Jesus Christ, went through, whether sacrificing our some of our possessions, Father, our time, our resources, Lord, even our lives as we serve and minister to those who are in great need. I pray, Lord, that you would empower each one of us. Lord, despite the limitations that we have right now in this time of quarantine, help us, Lord, to find creative ways how we continue to express our devotion and our love for you. Remind us, Father, that there is hope in your Son, Jesus Christ. We don't need to fall into despair but that trust in you and hold on to you. Thank you for this wonderful reminder of this woman who have expressed her tremendous love for your son, Jesus Christ. May we learn from her as well. Help us not to be timid believers, but be obedient and victorious disciples of your son, Jesus Christ, showing the world that you are worth believing in. This we pray in Jesus' name. Just to
best than you deserve You're far more beautiful More precious than the oil The sum of my desires And the fullness of my joy Thank you, Spirit Yeah.